just hold the chair or this, this bag. Just oh, yeah. The computer is there. Perfect. Okay. For me, perfect. The perfect. Sound, oh. The sound is working because <laughs> the sound is perfect. Okay. Nice. Okay. Now, <laughs> we, see if, uh, we have to learn from all these trickter, tricksters and banksters and corporations and corrupt politicians. We have to use their method, methods for the general public. So we learn their tricks and then we use the same methods. They create loopholes uh, with lobbyists uh, when they're writing bills for, the, for example, the financial sector, when they deregulate and all these things. So let's, let's us together find the loophole so that we can have some power in uh, determining uh, the direction we want to take with our societies. It is high time that we reclaim the power, uh, but we have to put some work in it. Because if you know, we want to live in a society, the dream society uh, that we want, then we have to help co-create that dream or somebody else is never going to be able to fulfill our own dreams. So you have to put some effort. If, you, if you're not happy with your society, nobody can change it except you. Well, I think uh, we had, of course, uh, the third largest financial collapse in the history of humankind. Uh, because we have to do everything very big, <laughs> even if we're very few. Uh, so at times of crisis, and I really encourage everybody that's listening to this to read a book by Naomi Klein called The Shock Doctrine. Uh, and it explains how uh, corrupt powers or people that live to control others and have power in societies use times of crisis to put into place emergency laws that are very damaging in the long term. And then the emergency laws tend to last, just like the emergency laws we're seeing in Egypt. There was emergency laws, the nation was forced to sign up to a new constitution without any debate. And what the, so they got one bad power away and the new bad power instead. So it's so important that we know what we want. It's not enough to say, I want to get rid of a, a corrupt uh, power. We also have to know what we want instead of that corrupt power. And the only way to sort of empower people is for them to make the units in society smaller. We live in two, we have two large systems to oversee uh, the general structure of society. Uh, and that means that too much power is in the hands of very few people. So we have to start by involving ourselves in communities and finding some th the issues that we feel are important. Uh, and it's different between countries, but we're all aspiring for the same things. And the one most important thing that unifies all humanity is this planet. We all live on this planet. And we have to realize that we're running out of it if we carry on living the way we do, and particularly us in the West. So we can't expect the other nations uh, that are getting material uh, wealth compared to the poverty they've been in, uh, like in China and India. We can't expect them to not have our lifestyles if we are not willing to compromise our lifestyles and understand that there is not going to be any future for our children if we don't change our ways, the way we consume. So that's the first thing that unifies us. The second thing is we can look at continents and then we can look at countries and then we can look at communities. But for any change to occur is that it has to occur, occur in uh, the heart of every human being. All revolutions start in our hearts and the way we behave in our daily lives. So if we're not willing to change anything, then we can't expect others to change. Well, the thing is that, um, like, I consider myself to be sort of uh, anarcho-realismo. Uh, and uh, I'm not a full-fledged anarchist anymore because uh, since I was a teenager and I was reading the philosophy of anarchism, I have realized that people don't want to live in an anarchistic society. And then you have to remember when you talk about anarchism, it is purely about social responsibility. And people are not ready for that yet. So you have to give them the tools, like national referendums. Uh, and in order to create the tools, you have to go into the place of power and change it. But then you have to leave. Because no matter what people tell you, power corrupts. Always, always, always. So you have to stay in power as short as possible. And then it is very important that people um, go into all these different places of power. 
you know, as many activists and people with uh, integrity and honesty go in for a short period of time to both understand how they think so we can use the same methods for good stuff <laughs> and uh, plant seeds. Because I really firmly believe that there are no uh, evil people. Uh, there is always, even the most vicious people in the history of humankind had a kind sign that they showed to their family or their dog or whatever. They were not all evil through. They had a lack of compassion for others, maybe, uh, you know, nations or races um, or the enemy. But they had a compassionate side for some people. So if you can plant seeds and get people to think differently, you have to do that. You can't do it only from outside. You have to do it from inside and outside. So, you know, uh, I can't say that I would want to be a politician for a long time because it's... Uh, it's a, it's a sacrifice, but uh, a privilege at the same time. And then, you know, once I'm done with that, then there are plenty of other things I'd like to do. Maybe just sit on a beach for a year. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> if you have that spark and that need for change, which I know that you find in almost every European country and every country in our world. If you have this need, you can just see it in Egypt and Tunisia and all these other countries that are trying to shake up uh, off the oppression. And it's led by young people. And you can hear what they're saying. And they're saying exactly what the young people are saying here. They're saying exactly what the young people in Asia are saying, you know, because we're all the same. So we all have the same aspirations and dreams. And we just want to live, we want to be happy. That's the greatest achievement we can have in our lives. Just to be happy and live with dignity and have enough to eat and some shelter. I think most people would be just quite happy with that. You know? So um, we don't need all these wars and territories and um, hunger for power. There are very few people that really need that. And they are mostly all of them in power. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's just time to send them off to a, the, their toy island or something. Yeah. <laughs>